Joe Manchin went on The View, surprisingly, never thought I'd see the day where he goes on The View, um, and they really gave him a, a softball interview. I want to play this answer for you about his ideology and why he does what he does, and then I want to respond to it. You're the most conservative Democrat in the Senate, I would say, and often tout your willingness to work with Republicans. In fact, um, I think you have voted with uh, Trump 51.6% of the time. So you are the most conservative of the Democrats. But after all of the obstruction that we've seen and their refusal to even acknowledge reality right now, as we have just discussed, why continue to work with these people who clearly aren't operating in good faith or, in the president's case, with a full deck? Well, Joy, that's my job, okay? And the bottom line is, I've always said, if I can go home and explain it, I can vote for it. If I can't explain it, I can't vote for it. My state, as you know, is, is, is extremely conservative and red. But I'm a proud yeah. West Virginia Democrat, and I tell people I am fiscally responsible and socially compassionate. That's the way I was raised. And I still feel that to my soul and every bone in my body that I believe that we should be compassionate to help those who can't help themselves and give people a chance that need a chance or a second chance or a hand up. Uh, that's all. And I sometimes listen to the far left and the far right, and I want to make sure that my conscience is the far left and the far right is my reality, that we do too much, that we put too much burden on other people, and trying to find that compromise in the middle. I've always done that. I like that. So I have a lot to say about this. First of all, let's just talk about this concept of being a centrist or being a moderate. In some ways, I think that that makes perfect sense and it is reasonable. In other ways, I think it's not only is it not reasonable, it's nefarious. So let me explain what I mean. When you talk about being a centrist or being a moderate in the context of among your fellow Americans... So you get the opinions of all the American people, you write them down, and you look at what the most popular positions are among the people, and then you could look at that and say, I agree with that. So I'm, I'm right smack dab in the center of mainstream American opinion. That's where I am. So I'm a moderate. I'm a centrist. If you say that, I, I actually agree with you, because when I look at polling data, that is my takeaway. I tend to agree with the majority of the American people on most issues. Some issues, yes, I have my disagreements, but on most issues, I'm right there. So if you describe it that way, I would say I'm a moderate and I'm a centrist. The nefarious version of being a centrist or a moderate is this. Washington, D.C. really is the swamp. It really is incredibly corrupt. They've done studies on this, in fact. Um, they, the politicians in D.C. represent the interests of corporations in the top 1% way more than they ever represent the interests of the American people. So it's an institutionally corrupt body flooded with big money, flooded with corporate money, flooded with billionaire money, flooded with money from Wall Street and big pharma and the military industrial complex. And so if you're in the middle of that spectrum, you know what you are? Corrupt, because they're corrupt. If you're in the middle of that spectrum, you know what you are? corporatist because establishment Republicans and establishment Democrats are corporatist. So if you say you're a centrist in the context of Washington, D.C. and elites, I say you're a corrupt corporatist elitist. That's what I say. And that's what Joe Manchin is. He's not centrist and moderate in the in the former definition I explained of like, I agree with the American people. No, he's a centrist or a moderate in the sense that he looks at the D.C. swamp and he's like, I'm right smack dab in the middle of the swamp. So, I feel like people don't make that distinction enough. The other thing about this explanation that I kind of despise is that I feel like a lot of people who say what he said here, number one, they're not actually like well-read and they don't follow this stuff closely. They don't know a lot about policy. They don't know a lot about current events. So, it strikes me as like, the dumb person's attempt of sounding smart when it comes to politics. And like, it, it's the lazy, I think I'm smart response of like, who, me, bro? Listen, I'm above the fray and I'm like really reasonable. So what I do is I like listen to both sides and I make my own mind up. And it's, I, I think there's a fallacy embedded in that. The fallacy is like, 
Well, the midpoint between two positions is always the most reasonable thing. And it's like, in other contexts, everybody understands how stupid that is. You know, everybody understands that, like, if you have one person who says, hey, here's how you have babies, pregnancy and it, reproduction, and somebody else says, I think the stork brings babies, you're not going to say, well, sometimes it's the stork and sometimes it's reproduction. No, you're going to be like, that person's wrong and that person's right. It's a complete fallacy to think that, you know, the midpoint of any two claims is always correct. And so what we've seen in D.C. on top of the corporatism and the corruption is that the right has gone further and further and further and further and further right, and the so-called left has followed them. So now you have a so-called left that's for endless war, along with the right. You have a so-called left that's for Wall Street bailouts, as is the right. And so he's bragging about being in the middle of that. It's just annoying, right? Like, he thinks he's holier than thou, but really he's just right smack dab in the middle of the swamp. So those are the first few things I wanted to say about that. Um... Now let's go through some more specifics here. Joy points out, hey, you voted with Trump a majority of the time. And his response is basically like, yeah, I did. That's basically what he's saying. Um, and by the way, the ways in which he votes with Republicans. See, it's not like Joe Manchin, you know, is helping the people on a lot of issues. But then sometimes he just disagrees with the Democrats. Like, oh, he's more conservative on like abortion you know, or he's more conservative on certain social issues, guns. No, it's like Joe Manchin, when he's voting with Republicans, he's voting with them to, like, deregulate Wall Street. Which gets to another issue here, which is, yeah, a West Virginia Democrat, which he loves to call himself that all the time, a West Virginia Democrat would be more socially conservative, would be more pro-gun, would be more anti-abortion. And that's par for the course, because that's what the sentiment is in West Virginia, by and large. Oh, but a West Virginia Democrat would be economically populist and would be pro-union. But he's more of a character to be like, I want to deregulate Wall Street. Which again shows you that it's not a kind of moderation or centrism that reflects his constituents. It's a kind of moderation or centrism which again puts him right in the middle of the swamp. Um, and I like when he says, I listen to the far left and I listen to the far right. My conscience is on the far left, but my reality is on the far right. Sure you want to say that? <laughs> Are you sure you want to say that? Is that something that, you know, you think sounds good and reflects good on you? It doesn't. So, um, Joe Manchin is actually going to be one of the biggest impediments to positive change now. Because, you know, we're close to split in the Senate. We're, we have the two runoffs in Georgia and we have to see how that goes and who wins and all that stuff. But either way, Joe Manchin is going to be a big player here. And his record shows 50% of the time, and previously I think it was 60% of the time, he was agreeing with Republicans and Trump. So he's not even really a Democrat. If majority of the time he's, he's voting with Trump. So he could be a giant impediment to positive change. And it drives me crazy that now he's sort of being glorified. Like, you heard what they said at the end. Oh, I like that on The View. As if he's some sort of, like, high-minded, above-the-fray, reasonable person that others just aren't. No, he's corrupt, and he's part of the corruption, and he's right in the middle of that swamp, and he likes to have this cutesy little story to override it. But the way that you're going to need to deal with a guy like Joe Manchin in this upcoming era, that's where you need somebody who's smart at politics, who's also Machiavellian, who knows how to force their hand, knows how to apply pressure on behalf of the American people. You would need a Lyndon B. Johnson type character. You would need an FDR type character. But unfortunately, Biden ain't going to do any of that stuff. And so Joe Manchin is going to vote however he wants. And um, there will be no pushback from the party leadership and we'll continue to get nothing accomplished, or if anything does get accomplished, it'll be more Wall Street deregulation. So he thinks he's a hero, but he's actually hurting the country quite a bit.